In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, who has graciously invited us here today to be his guest. Amen. Have you ever had to ask someone for a handout? I would imagine that all of us here today have, have had to ask someone for help at some point in our lives. Maybe it was, was financially. Maybe we had to ask someone for a loan. Or maybe we couldn't quite solve a problem on our own, so we had to ask somebody for help so that we could solve the problem with them. But I'm not wondering if you've ever had to ask for help. I'm wondering if you've ever had to ask for a handout. Have you ever had to ask the bank not to foreclose your home because you'd be on the streets otherwise? Have you ever had to ask someone else to buy your family groceries for the week because they would go hungry otherwise? If you've never had to ask for a handout, can you imagine how hard that would be to do? How much it would sting our pride and how helpless we might feel as we ask for one. In a sense, all of us, uh, we do know what it's like to ask for a handout because we do it every single week. When we gather here and worship as one body, we confess together that we're sinful both by nature and by choice. And that all on our own, we are responsible for wrecking our relationship with God and our relationship with our neighbor. And we say together for this, O God, we deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But then we do something interesting. We all ask God for a handout. And we say, but trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Do you know where we get that phrase? It's the same phrase that the tax collector used in his prayer that we just heard. Lord, have mercy on me. The sinner, really, is what it says. What I'd like us to consider tonight is how our understanding of God shapes our prayers. Because in that scripture lesson that Pastor Bitter read earlier, we heard two prayers, and they were both very different in nature. And both of those prayers tell us a lot about how each of those individuals understood God. Now, for a long time... I understood this this parable of Jesus about the the devout person and the thief. I kind of understood it this way. Uh, Don't be like the proud Pharisee. Be like the humble tax collector. And what I would do is I'd try really, really hard to make myself feel bad for my sins. And I'd also try really hard not to be proud and bring attention to myself like the Pharisee. And we certainly should feel sorry for our sins, and we certainly shouldn't be proud people. But I think that that's a very shallow way to understand this parable. The question we really need to be asking is why do both of these men pray like they do? How does their understanding of God shape their prayers? And remember, Jesus is telling this account to people who were confident of their own righteousness and looked with contempt on everyone else. They had, they had an inflated view of themselves. And so Jesus starts by saying, two men went to the temple to pray. The Pharisee, the devout person, he didn't approach the temple in order to receive from God. He went there to perform for God. And he stood at a distance apart from all of the common people and raised his hands so that everybody would know he was praying. And he said, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men. 
robbers and evildoers and adulterers and even like this tax collector, I, I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all that I get. Based on his prayer, what would you say was the Pharisee's understanding of who God is? He seems to have thought that God was a divine bookkeeper putting tally marks in the righteous column for every time that he did something good and didn't do something wicked. And that God was putting lots of tally marks in the unrighteous column for all of the people that the Pharisee perceived to be immoral. He seems to have thought that God was as proud of his performance as he was. If this is, if this is how you understand God then you will always be able to find someone else who's worse than you are. And your life will reflect a sort of spiritual roller coaster where you think that God is more pleased with you on your good spiritual days, whatever those are, and that he's more disappointed with you, he's really disappointed with you on your bad spiritual days, whatever those are. It wasn't the Pharisee's prayer that was wrong. It was the way that he understood who God, who God is. He had a false God. And because all of us struggle with the same problem, God tells us repent and turn away from yourself. Let's look at the tax collector's prayer. He went to the temple not to perform for God, but but to receive from God. Big difference, isn't there? And he stood off at a distance too, but it was more like someone who understood himself as the chief sinner in the place. And so he didn't feel this need to compare himself to anyone else. He simply said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The tax collector seems to have understood God as the God whom he could approach not on the basis of his worth, but on the basis of God's promise. The Apostle Paul wrote about this in Romans chapter 4. And he said, To the person who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. I'm going to read that one more time. To the person who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. The Apostle Paul also said in 1 Timothy 1, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Guilty people. The tax collector seems to have understood God as the God who desires that all people be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. And so God says to us all tonight, repent and turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. In a few minutes, Jesus, Jesus himself will invite us to come to his supper and to receive his his body and blood together with the bread and the wine. And it's the same body which bore the poison of our sin and it's the same blood which he poured out for our salvation. In his small catechism, Martin Luther taught what the sacrament is And what the blessings are that Jesus gives through it. He said that that through this sacrament we receive the forgiveness of sins and life and eternal salvation. And he talked about what gives the sacrament its power. That it's not our eating and our drinking, but it's Christ's own words that, that this is given and this is poured out for you. And then Martin Luther asked the question, Who then is properly prepared to receive this sacrament? 
And he said, Fasting and other outward preparations may serve a good purpose, but the person is properly prepared who believes these words given and poured out for you. Dear friends, draw near to your God in the full assurance of faith that this meal is for you. And then go in the peace of forgiveness and be kind and compassionate to one another. Just as in Christ, God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us. Amen.